I went into the Pacific Northwest forest with a commitment to spend a year making installations, making sculptures that are site specific using only natural materials. This piece was the first one. It's called Unconditional. It started as a bridge between two giant Douglas firs, a connection that soon became a portal into a different world, surrounded by the form of infinity made by twigs from the area, intertwining, always unconditionally supporting each other. The project is called Listening to the Mother, because that's really what I want to concentrate on, that unconditional support that's throughout the forest. As I began to work and explore and create, I encountered a lot of surprises, a lot of insights, and a lot of wisdom. When I began to scout out different areas for my second sculpture, my second installation, I found this old cedar stump with a new or a daughter tree growing out of her. I pictured her branches catching the mother's wisdoms. That connection to mother and daughter and time and wisdom of listening. There is reciprocity in this intergenerational communication and connection. And I wanted to capture the ephemerality of it, but also the constancy. I made the little wisdoms that are strung together with plantain thread out of paper, and they will decompose and fall to the forest floor again, much like handed down educations and truths and folklore. Nourishing our future with our past. The third installation, I was inspired by the season beginning to turn and how the seeds for next year are already nurturing themselves, getting ready. And so this became the inspiration, a seed that has everything in it that it will need for next year to bloom. This connection, this abiding life force is something that I'm really come in contact with deeply in the forest. This piece is called Opus. As the seasons began to change and go deeper into the autumn, I was inspired by the falling leaves, that dance of change. We are always in a state of change as humans. And in the forest, I've seen this constant dance of transformation, of acceptance of flow, of an ongoing sense, even with built-in endings. This piece I called Dancing into Change, and it reminded me that that movement forward was never-ending. It could be slow, and it could be beautiful and elegant in that dance, but it was there, and I had to work quite quickly before transformation took over. It was an amazing lesson to really be present into what is for now. Both the challenge and the beauty. As the winter began to knock on the door, I was picturing being home and not being out in the cold. And that's when I became aware of how many shelters, how many homes were in the forest. And that exploration um, sat deeply with me, always looking for a permanent home in my own life. I realized this forest was home to so many life forms and energies. So I explored working with the branches and the twigs and the mosses and the evergreens to make a shelter, a shelter that would be connected to a tree and the forest floor and each branch held and holding the other. This piece was called Shelter. 
The sixth installation began with a lot of cold weather. It was late November and I wasn't able to get to the forest each week. I found a piece of root, really interesting piece of wood that seemed to be willing to come home with me. I was able to experiment with paper mache without glue, just flour, water, non-inked paper, and that allowed me to explore textures and form and even being able to take this piece and try out different environments and see where she wanted to be. Eventually I found the perfect spot. She seemed very happy with it until on this rainy forest day, it didn't work. But things happen and sometimes there's opportunity to create from mistakes. I was able to add some moss, which was everywhere in this forest. And it seemed like she even was happier. She belonged here and she was weathering in the rain. The seventh piece was made entirely indoors. This was the heart of winter. Yet I was able to harvest lots of different grasses and twigs and sticks from the forest and bring them home. I had been dreaming of trees, missing them, because I wasn't there as often. So this was what inspired me. And even though I wasn't in the forest to work for hours on end, I was able to walk and listen to the tree stories and listen to their different perspectives. And that's what I call this piece, Perspectives. Finally, a beautiful winter's day came and I was able to find just the right spot to hang this piece of burlap with grasses that seemed so much more than just burlap and grasses. It has this quiet serenity. And as it blew in the breeze, I feel the trees were quite happy with this depiction of their perspective as we co-created it together. The eighth piece was very challenging. I stopped and started a number of times, but eventually something came together. It was working with what was there, including my feeling of hesitancy and Sometimes that's where we find the greatest explorations. One of the biggest reminders for this piece for me was to let go, to just create. This piece is called Stream of Life because it has lots of components and lots of pieces, things that I started over again and again. And yet when I look at it, when it was complete, it seemed to have a natural rhythm. This flow of all these parts that were connected and told their own story individually, but also collectively. For the ninth installation, I went into the forest a little bit more often again as the weather began to warm and I was struck with how much mud there was, how much moss, but also how much growth and new energy and new life there was everywhere. I love the shape of baskets for carrying, for holding, for nesting. And the branches were quite supple on the forest floor after a very wet winter and spring. So for this installation called Cycles of Joy, that I hope to capture that spring, that new life energy. I made moss balls and suspended them in the baskets with new growth coming out of them. The suspended baskets were full of motion and shadow and light and growth. I think it captured that sense of newness, energy and joy in the forest. 
I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the tenth installation, but I made some pieces out of sticks and grasses, which I always love the different sounds of grasses and the different shapes of sticks. And using cotton string, I began to just play with the pieces. As I sat in my backyard one day thinking about what I was going to do, I heard the chimes just making music in the spring breeze. And I was immediately transported to the forest in the incredible amounts of songs and symphonies that were there. And that's what this represents, the different layers and textures of the sound. This piece is Song of the Forest. As I began the 11th installation, I was aware that I felt very familiar with this piece of the forest, that I had missed a lot of the day-to-day -day time spent over the winter, and that now the weather was more hospitable. I was able to spend hours here. This gave me perspective for the complexity and the simplicity of this amazing magical place. And that's what this one's called. Simple complexities. As I started to think about the last installation of this year-long project, I returned to the site of the first piece. Unconditional had already begun her way back to the forest floor. This project is called Listening to the Mother. And as I sat with this space, this site, these materials, Mother Nature was quite strongly voicing that I should make a piece here. And that unlike all the other more abstract forms, I should make her more representational. I hesitated. I worked with materials that were already there, adding a little bit more moss. And eventually this piece came together, sort of in spite of me. But once I really listened, once I was really listening to Mother Nature, I understood that this was the last piece. She's titled Mother Nature. <laughs> 